it's a wonderful evening tonight and i i uh the cool air feels so good outside i was just outside just a minute ago um want to uh ask us to turn to isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1 tonight we're going to talk about the the uh, what isaiah is saying here and basically it's his his attitude that says here am i lord send me um let's let's begin reading in chapter 6 verse 1 of isaiah in our study as we continue our study in isaiah that we've been doing on wednesday nights it goes like this in the year that king uzziah died i saw the lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple above him stood the seraphim each had six wings and with two he covered his face and with two he covered his feet and with two he flew and one called to another and said holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory and the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar, and he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull, and their ears heavy, and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is a desolate waste, and the Lord removes people far away, and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. And though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak, whose stump remains when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. Isaiah is telling about his call to ministry in this chapter. We know that Jeremiah talked about his call uh, to ministry. Um, and Isaiah located it to be the time that the year that King Uzziah died, who was a king of, the, of Judah. And he was a good king, but he was the king that tried to go into the temple at one time and got leprosy. And so he was, uh, he was judged over that act. And uh, they had to escort him out. And he lived apart from people because of his leprosy. But that was, the year that he died would have been 740 B.C. And so this puts it down in, into an, a time frame uh, that Isaiah heard the call of God. Um, what Isaiah says happened in that year is that he saw the Lord. Uh, and he mentions that his the the robe his train of his robe filled the temple. Now this temple here could be the temple in in Jerusalem. Uh, it uh, we do know that the temple in Jerusalem was a mirror copy of the real temple in heaven, and uh, that uh, maybe where actually he's seeing is the actual. But he sees the Lord, and uh, in that time uh, it was the smoke filled the temple. It says. Um, the the Lord's presence was always with His people in in the temple. It was with the in the uh, in, with Moses on Mount Sinai and the people of God in, there in the beginning. And then it was in the temp in the in the tabernacle, and uh, the, the 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 glory could be seen. The Scripture says that cloud was with them all, above the above them. Uh, it, the Scripture talks about once the tabernacle was uh, was uh, uh, instituted and it was built, and they carried it everywhere they went. And then, then eventually, uh, Solomon built the temple, which was uh, 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 a fixed structure, whereas the tabernacle was a movable structure, and uh, and the glory it was was there with them, and it was in the holy of holies. But um, but Isaiah saw the Lord, 
And I think I see in this is the fact that that, that uh, he had his eyes on the Lord. He had his eyes and his heart in the right direction. And this is what we need to do in this time of, of isolation. We're fixing, we're going to come out of this kind of slowly. We're already moving that way. And uh, here on the 17th, the week and a half, we're going to come back and have a drive-in service uh, on the, there in the parking lot of the church. Um, but uh, uh, he had his, we need to keep our eyes on the Lord like Isaiah did. He, and, but he had a vision of the Lord. And he had a vision of God in his holiness. And what he saw was, uh, was some angels whose name are seraphim. This is the only place in the Bible that mentions uh, the seraphim. Now, there is a similar description. Uh, it talks about there was, they had two, they had six wings. Two they covered their feet, two they covered their face, and then two they flew with. And uh, this is also the description of the living creatures in Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. Let me just read that and just see this. You can see the similarity as I read that. And it goes like, uh, this it says, and the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Now, the similarity is they have six wings, both of them had six wings, the seraphim and, and the living creatures, but also they were saying, uh, Holy, holy, holy to the Lord. And so there's there's the similarity. Could be the same group that we're seeing, seraphim in Revelations chapter four. But Isaiah saw them. He called them seraphim. By the way, the word means flames or to burn. And so we know that uh, uh, the Lord we there's a there he has to burn uh, to bring cleansing. And um, uh, we, but here we notice that the angels are saying something. They're not, only, they're not only saying holy, 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 but they said the whole earth is full of his glory. Now, Psalm 72 says, may the whole earth be filled with his glory. And, it, you know, really, uh, the Lord uh, it does fill the whole earth. His glory saying he created the earth. He created the oceans. He created the stars. He created the moon. He created all the planets and the sun. And all of that's his. And so the whole earth is full of his glory. But there's coming a time where the scripture says that the whole earth will be filled with his glory as the waters cover the sea. And uh, they will all know him, it says. And this is talking about the millennial reign of Jesus when he rules on this earth. And uh, uh, but, in, but that's in Isaiah uh, chapter 11. And in, uh, let me just read that. It says, in chapter uh, 11, verse uh, uh, 9, it says, They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, um, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. But uh, the glory of the Lord is seen today through Jesus and through his message. And and we and so and we can partake uh, and experience God's glory when we look to Jesus, Isaiah saw the Lord and that the Lord is Jesus who has come for us and died for us at the cross. The glory of God is seen in the face of Christ, the scripture says. And so we need to get a vision of Jesus. We, we need to turn our thoughts toward the one who cared about us so much to come and die for us. And that's what we need to do in this time of, of uh, that we've been here in isolation. But uh, he saw the Lord. And there was a shaking of the threshold, he said. And But notice, Isaiah also saw himself correctly. He saw his sin because he saw it from the right point of view. We can hear, we can hear the news's point of view. And, there, and everybody's biased. Everybody's biased at some point. There's no, no denying that. Uh, we, can, we can talk about somebody else, anybody's point of view about a lot of things. And, but what matters is God's point of view. And God says we've all sinned and fallen short of his glory. Romans 3, 23. And Isaiah saw his sin. He said, woe is me. Now he said woe to those later, but he had first said, woe is me. He saw his own sin. He saw his own failings. And he, in, 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 the, in the light of God's glory, he saw where he was uh, didn't measure up. And he says, for I am lost, I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. 
for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And so Isaiah had seen the glory. He had seen uh, the Shekinah glory. He had seen the majesty of God that was with Israel throughout all its existence. And um, today it's, it's with those who turn to Jesus. But he saw his sin and he saw it correctly. He saw his, himself correctly. You know, the only way to see ourselves correctly is to look to the Lord. The only, only way to understand what's really going on is listen to God's word and turn to the cross of Christ. We see how much Jesus loved me and how much my sin uh, had killed it, putting him on, put him on the cross. Because I was there and you were there in our humanity when we, when we said he deserves to die. That's the ugliness, ugliness and the sorriness of our sin. But not only did he see himself, he saw the Lord, he saw himself correctly. He experienced God's grace. And his, God's grace atoned for his sin. You see what happened ha after this? Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Now the, the coals of the altar was where the sacrifices were done. It was out, out in front of the temple. Uh, to the left, I understand, if you're looking at the front door, it'd be off to the left, the, the, the bronze altar. And that's where they would offer sacrifices. And uh, so there was coals taken from the altar the angel brought to him. I believe this is the real, the real uh, altar. And there has to be a sacrifice to atone for sins. It had to be in the Old Testament, and it still has to be today. And it has been given to us in Jesus. And that that uh, coal was taken and, and touched him's lips, his lips. And, and he was talking about his, he, had, he was a man of unclean lips. Well, God atoned for his unclean lips. He atoned for his sin. And he and was told, your sin is atoned for. And so Isaiah experienced the grace of God. He looked to the Lord. He saw himself as he really was. And experience God's grace. That is how we'll find God's grace today. We got to look to the Lord. We got to look and and to Him and and uh, and admit our our sin, and admit that we've missed the mark, and and uh, whether we're saved or not, we've got to we have to be in an attitude of repentance. Even as a Christian, uh, we we're to be what God wants us to be. We must walk with the attitude of admission of our when we when, when we sin. And God's grace is there. He said. Uh, uh, in Hebrews, it says, uh, drawn into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And so we need the grace of God all the time to to bring the, bring the continual cleansing. You know, the Bible talks about that we're being saved. Uh, and it talks about the people who are perishing are perishing in the present tense. And so it's an ongoing thing. Even though we begin to trust Christ at one day if we're saved, there's an ongoing salvation that goes on all the time. And it's always through Jesus. But you know, Isaiah also, he saw the Lord, he saw himself, he saw, experienced God's grace, but he also heard God's call on his life. He was commissioned by the Lord. He heard the Lord say something, who will go for us? And Isaiah had the right attitude, of, and that is a heart of availability to the Lord. Lord, here am I. Use me, send me. And so Isaiah said yes to the Lord. Uh, he didn't, he didn't, uh, he just, he just, that was the only appropriate action. You know, there's the only appropriate way we can serve the Lord is, is that we got to see the Lord and we got to experience his grace first. We must look to him and receive his forgiveness and his grace. And that only then can we hear him call us uh, forward into what God, what he wants us to be and to do. But he, he heard God's call. He was available. And the message it was told, he was told to go make them hard. And he said, keep on hearing. He was to say to the people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. And uh, he was told this, uh, make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy, heavy and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. And, and Isaiah said, is told to go make the people hard. And why? Because they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't listen. And now this passage of scripture about what Isaiah's 
commissioned to do is quoted six times in the New Testament. So it's something we need to take notice of. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and Romans, all six of those places, quote this very passage of Scripture. I want to turn to uh, John right now, John 12, and I, and I want you to see what John said in John 12, um, uh, 37. John 12, 37 through 41. Though he had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him, so that the word spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he heard from us, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? That's Isaiah 53, 1. Therefore they could not believe. For again Isaiah said, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. And it says here, therefore they could not believe. For again, uh, they could not believe. So, the, and the Lord made them hard, it says here. The Lord made them hard. That's what Isaiah was to do. Through his ministry and message, he was to make people hard. So you, can you imagine that he was going to make people harder in his message by, by sharing the, uh, uh, God's message of repentance? Well, you know, you think about it, that's what happens in all of our ministries. When all of our, is God uses all of us. If people don't listen, God makes them hard. Uh, and that's a terrible thing. For Now, the point was, John was saying they wouldn't believe what had been heard. And then, that, and then, then he says that God hardened them. And so because of the sequence of how he's saying that, it's because they wouldn't believe what they had heard. Now, to make this more clear, Matthew quotes Isaiah as well, but adds a commentary that helps us understand a little bit better. And he says this in verse chapter 13, verse 13, Matthew 13, 13. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that says, you will indeed hear, but never understand. You will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear. And their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. Now, we've read that God made them hard because they would not believe. But here he explains, again, they have closed their eyes, they have closed. They're in verse uh, 15. So the, the so the accountability is on the people. But the Lord, as a result, made them hard and, and had a hardness of heart. So uh, now I'm going to go back to John, uh, John and in verse uh, 9, chapter 939, it says this. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. That's John 9, 39. And so Jesus was a, he was, he, he was causing two things. For those that, um, who see, who do not see, they may see. Those that realize that they are blind, that they are sinners, help them to see. And those who see may become blind. In other words, those that think that everything's all right, they're going to become hardened. They're going to become blind. And, and so this is what the gospel does for those that reject it. It makes them hard. So some people get more, more sensitive because they repent. And then some people get harder because they don't repent. And this is what the gospel does. So Isaiah was told to go make them hard. And, and he asked the question, how long, Lord? And, and the, the answer was, do it until the cities are de desolate. To the land is desolate, and, and this is what he's talking about. Uh, is in what he's talking about is it was when the uh, later the Babylonians would come, but but Isaiah's call was to do it until uh, it, the judgment of God on his people was uh, that severe. When it did come, it did come, and um, and it talks about the Lord removes people far away. Uh, then in verse thirteen he says, "Though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again." Like a terebinth or an oak, 
whose stump remains when it is felled. I remember when I was nine years old, right here where I'm sitting, behind me, where you're looking through this window behind me here, that, uh, hard to point the right place here, there's the window there. Behind me there was a, my grandpa was shoving trees down. It used to be full of trees out there. And I remember in my memory, about nine years old, they would burn those. And of course, that's what everybody does. They burn, they push trees down and they burn them in rows or uh, and everything. And and so what there's, he's referring to, that even the stump was burned after they cut the trees down. And this is talking about a judgment that's very severe on God's people. And and it was going to come. And uh, because there's a hardness that had to be dealt with. And God was going to deal with that hardness. God's going to deal with the hardness in our in our in our world in the future, for those that return against the truth, and will not believe. It will not be good, and the hell is the destiny of those that will not believe. There, make no mistake, that the Bible is very, very clear. But God desires all to turn to Him. He's made provision for all to turn to Him if we would just listen to Jesus. If we would just turn to His love for us at the cross. But there's an answer here. I want to, as we close this, the Holy Seed is its stump. He says that last phrase um, here, the Holy Seed is its stump. Now, the 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 Bible mentions in, in, in Isaiah, just over a few pages in chapter 10, in verse 1, that the stump refers to Jesus. He says this, I said chapter 11, verse 1 rather. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his root shall bear fruit. And so there's going to be a branch coming. Like I've cut some trees down and the branches come back here. I'm fixing to have to cut them down. Haven't done I think I mentioned it. I haven't done it yet. But but there's a branch come, going to come back from the stump of Jesse. And that's referring to David. And and that's that promise that David would have a ancestor or descendant on the throne of Israel. It's what he's referring to. He's referring to Jesus. That's what John said. He, John in chapter 12 said that, that the Lord was Jesus. Uh, and so uh, he says a branch will, from his root shall bear fruit. So those who are connected to Jesus by faith are going to bear fruit, whether you're Jew or Gentile. And so now look in verse 10. In that day, the root of Jesse Shall, who shall stand as a signal for the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. And this is talking about the millennial reign of Christ, but this is a quote from Romans 15, 12, where Paul gives it the reason why we're to go to the Gentiles today, because they're, they're welcome. You and I who are Gentiles are welcome, though, and the Jews, well, is, is the gospel's to them first and the Gentile as well. But in that day, the root of Jesse, now here he says root, now, uh, he talked about the stump of Jesse. That would be a descendant. But here the root of Jesse is, is the Lord. The Lord created Adam and Eve. And, and the Lord, and then from their, their line on down came Jesse. So the, the root of Jesse is referring to the Lord, the ancient of days, the Lord from heaven, Jesus, as John in chapter 12 would say. Jesus uh, is the Lord. And he, he'll stand as a signal for the peoples. Of him shall the nations inquire. And his resting place shall be glorious. So how do we, that branch will grow because we inquire of Jesus. We look to Jesus. We're like Isaiah. We look to him and receive his uh, grace uh, and forgiveness. It's John 1, 14 says, He became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. We beheld his glory. And this is what, you know, Isaiah saw the glory. But today we can see the glory too if we'll look to Jesus. Revelations chapter 22 ties these two verses together. In verse 16 says, uh, in verse 16 says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. So the, the root and the descendant of David is what Isaiah 11, 1, 11 10 is talking about clearly Jesus himself tells John I am the root I am the descendant of David and here's the one that the fruit will come from here's how that stump will grow back here's how 
uh, that, that throughout all the world, had a fill of all the world, all the earth, and the nations will, will inquire of him. I ask today, have you inquired of Jesus? Have you looked to Jesus in your life? Are you looking to Jesus? Are you looking to this world? Are you looking uh, at something that's going to pass away? Is your focus of life and your reason for living on something like that? Or is your reason for living uh, the love of Christ for you at the cross? Tonight, if you want to invite him as your Lord and Savior, you can pray this prayer with me sincerely from your heart. And the Bible says, whoever will call the name of the Lord will be saved. Pray this to him if you mean this tonight. Lord Jesus, I know that I've sinned and I am a man of unclean lips. But I believe, Jesus, you are the one that made provision for the grace that I needed at the cross. Thank you for dying for me and paying for my sins. And tonight I invite you to be my Lord and Savior, to, to change me, to lead me, to guide me, to be my reason for life and my joy and hope for the future. And in Jesus' name, I pray these things. Amen. Tell somebody that you made that you pray that prayer uh, to, tonight. Uh, if you pray for the first time, tell somebody and tell your pastor the first chance you get. May God bless you here tonight.